We're going to cover Laplace transforms, in particular how to obtain Laplace transforms from a plot. So if we have something like this, what is going to be the Laplace transform? We're also going to move on to finding things in Laplace tables. So here's problem two, where we're going to convert certain functions into Laplace form. And then finally combine those two by solving differential equations first and second order differential equations and also apply it to this problem where we give it this input right here and then we figure out what is y of t. Okay, so we have these uh, Laplace transforms our way to transform differential equations into algebraic form and then we can uh, manipulate those to find the solution. First of all, we might have some different inputs like I showed in the very last one. We might have this impulse function right here. And we want to come up with uh, a Laplace expression for this. So we know how to do this in the time domain, but let's try to do this in the Laplace domain. So we could just do, in time domain, it could be logic, you know, if time is less than one, then y of t equals zero and if time is greater than three, but time is less than five, you know, we could do these logical conditions, just do these steps, and that would equal three. And then if time is greater than five, then y of t equals zero. Okay, so we can do that in the time domain, but let's do this in the Laplace domain. And the very first thing we need to do is uh, come to our Laplace tables, and there you can see uh, unit step is going to be 1 over s. So that we have a unit step. So this is going to be a step from uh, 0 to 3. And so that's going to be 3 divided by s because we do a step of 3. But we don't start at 0, we start at 1. So we also need to put a time delay in there, minus uh, e to the minus s. And that, again, comes from our Laplace tables. If we could just come down to the bottom, we can see the time delay there. And that's the very last one there. If you have a time delay, t0, then it just becomes e to the minus t0s. Okay, now we need to come down. We need to come down minus 3 over s, e, and to the minus 5s. So we're just delaying by 5, the step down. And it's just a combination of two steps then. So let me get this out of the way. And then just combine these two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, first one's gonna be a step up by three. And then I'm gonna combine this with a second function. Okay, that's gonna come over here at five and just go down by three. And so if I just add up every point here. I'm just going to start with 0, 0. That equals 0. And if I look at this point right here, I have this one's equal to 3. And so I'm going to go up by 3. I'm just adding each one up. I look at these two points. That equals 3. Okay, and just go along. That equals 3. That equals 3. Okay, until I come to 5 where now I have a negative three there. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth point. Okay, right there is where I go back down, and those two are basically just gonna cancel each other out the rest of the way. Okay, so negative three here, and positive three here, and so those are gonna be zero there on out. So I've just added those two functions together, just point by point. And so when you look at some of these functions, you just want to think about how can I decompose these into things that I can find in the Laplace tables. Let's go on to problem 1b. The one that we're going to be looking at here is a step function. Sorry, not a step function, a ramp. Um, this, uh, this one right here, ramp with slope 1 is 1 over s squared. And this one's going to be a slope. Um, that's going to be 5 halves. I go up by 5. 
Uh, my delta x is 2 in that time period, so slope is uh, 5 halves. And so this is going to be 5 halves times 1 over s squared. Now I have a little bit of delay there. It only starts at time 2. So I'm going to do e to the minus 2s. Okay, and then um, this one to level out, okay, because this one is going to continue up forever and ever. It's just going to go up with slope 5 halves, and it's just going to continue. So I need to cancel that out. And the way I do that is just do another one that's going to start at time 4. And that's just going to be a negative 5 halves going down. So it's going to be 0 beforehand, and then negative 5 halves. So I'm just going to add that one in, minus 5 halves. Oh, not the delay yet. Okay, there's my ramp, and e to the minus 4s, because it starts at time equals 4. If I just add those two together, just like I did for the other one, okay, let me go out, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so it's going to start here, it's going to go up, and then it'll level out. But now I do something else besides just level out. I don't just continue like that. I have another one, which is going to be a slope negative 1. And then I'll add one that has slope positive 1 to that right at time 8. So I need to add two more. And so that one's going to be minus 1 over s squared e to the minus 6s. And then I'm going to have 1 over s squared. And that's going to be e to the minus 8s. So the combined function is, is going to be composed of these four right here. Okay, and that's going to be equal to u of s. Okay, they're linear operators. Laplace transforms are linear operators, so you can just take the individual pieces and add them together. Let's do this one down here. We have um, a step of minus 4 at time equals 1. So that's going to be minus 4 over s, e to the minus s. That's going to be that very first piece right there. So if I just kind of break that out, time 1, it's going to step down by minus 4. The next one I'm going to need is a step up at time 4. Okay, so it's going to come along and then step up by 6, I guess. Okay, this is going to be a step of 6. And then I'm going to need another one, which is going to happen at that same time. And that's going to be a ramp with slope, let's see, delta x equals 2, delta y equals, uh, that's going to be 6. So a slope of 3. And that starts at 4 as well. So let's just go ahead and do these three functions. I have 6 over s, e to the minus 4s. And then this one is going to be 3 over s squared. It's going to be a ramp, e to the minus 4s. So it's just a combination of those four. Just add them together. And that becomes u of s. Okay, let's look at uh, problem number two. We're going to go back to our Laplace transform table and find some of these. I'll go ahead and put this off to the side here. And let's look at our Laplace transform table. Let's see if we can find these in our table. We have the definition of a Laplace transform. If you don't know a function, you can always derive it. And so the Laplace transform of f of t, any function, is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity. And that's going to be f of t, e to the minus st dt. So you can always do that integral yourself, or you can look it up in these Laplace tables and where that's computed for you. And so there's some complicated expressions there where people have worked these out. And so we typically just use the Laplace tables when um, we need these. Okay, let's find the first one. That's just going to be a ramp. There's our ramp right there at the top. And so that's just going to be, uh, we'll do a capital letter for Laplace. 
And it's just going to be 8 divided by s squared. Second one is just the delay. There it is at the bottom. And so if I have the step function, well I have, first of all, my function, which is just equal to 2. And so I'm going to have 2 times e to the minus 3s. Okay, and that's going to be equal to f of s. Okay, uh, let's look at our derivatives. Derivative is right here. Okay, you can see that, the df dt. And that one's going to be um, equal to s times f of s minus the initial condition from the initial condition from the time domain. So this one in f of s is going to be equal to 5 times f of s. Um, and s there minus and then f of 0. We're not given the initial condition for that. And so we'll just leave it in that form. Now the integral, if we go down to the integral, you just divide by s. So f of s is going to be equal to 5 divided by, let's see, this is going to be 5 divided by s, okay, times y of s. Okay, and I guess I should have written this as y as well. Let me just do that. y of s minus y0. Okay, so let's go on down to the next one. There's just the differential. Basically, if you have zero initial conditions, um, differentiating something is just multiplying by s, and integrating something is like divided by s. That's one of the ways I can remember those and for Laplace basically just transforms it into an algebraic expression allows us to manipulate it and then transform it back into the time domain okay I'm gonna uh, go ahead and minimize this just a little bit more drag this over just so it's a little bigger on this side as we're working we can look at our Laplace tables when we need to but let's just go through this one we had our differential um, in this case we have initial condition equal to 5 and k is going to be a constant. This is a classic exponential decay uh, function. And so this first part right here, this one's going to be s times y of s. I use capital letters for Laplace domain. Minus y0. And that's going to be equal to 5. And so that will be equal to minus k times y s. Then I'll just go and bring this over on that side, bring this 5 over onto that side, and so I have s plus k times y of s equals 5. And I divide, so I can get y of s just on one side, 5 over s plus k. Let's go find that in our Laplace tables. Okay, here it is. We've got some Okay, so I see it right there, uh, 1 divided by s plus b. And so that means that this is going to be y of t. And then I just have my 5 times this e to the minus k times t. So that means that this one is going to just start off at value of 5. And then depending on the value of k, it's going to affect the speed at which it decays to 0. Okay, there's my solution to the first one. Let's look at the second one now. We have a second order system. And if we look at the you know, Laplace tables, if we have higher order derivatives, then it's a uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, but not bad. Let's go ahead and just do that for the second derivative. Um, okay, so we have, in this case, we're going to have d squared, or, sorry, the second derivative of y, okay, and that's going to be s squared, 
minus, uh, sorry, times y of s minus s. Okay, n is equal to 2 in this case. And then I'm going to have my initial condition. Put a line there. Okay, and then I have minus s to the 0, which is n is equal to 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So s to the 0 is just going to be equal to 1. And then I'm going to have my uh, first derivative there. But this one is 0, and this one is 0 as well. So I'm just left with that one. Okay, let's do it for the next one as well. So I just have, for this very first one, I have s squared times y of s. And for this next one, I have 2 times s times y of s, zero initial condition. And then I'll have plus y of s equals 5. Okay, I have, here's my differential equation in Laplace form. Again, it's an algebraic expression. So now we can just rearrange and solve it. So I'll just do y of s equals 5 divided by s squared plus 2s plus 1. And if I factor this, that's going to be 5 divided by s plus 1 squared. Okay, let's go hunting for this one in our Laplace tables. So we see a couple here that look like they might work. You know, this one, um, you know, any of these three look like they could work because they're that, that form. Uh, this middle one, which is has n equals 2. Um, you know, this one right here, if you look over on the left, uh, if t1, tau 1 and tau 2 are equal, then that's going to give a zero denominator. This is just for overdamped uh, systems where you have tau 1 not equal to tau 2. The very bottom one, um, that would give us a tau of equal to 1 and a zeta equal to 1. And you can see down here in the denominator, you had 1 minus uh, zeta squared. That would give you 0 and with the square root there. So this one only works for um, underdamped systems where zeta is between 0 and but less than 1. Okay, so let's use this middle one instead. Uh, this one is going to be uh, tau s plus 1 to the n where n is going to be equal to 2 and tau is going to be equal to 1. So let's transform that back into the time domain. And that's going to be 5 times the quantity. Okay, 1 divided by tau, which is 1, to the first power. And then n is going to be equal to 2. So I'm going to have 2 minus 1 factorial, which is just going to be 1 as well. And then I have t to the 2 minus 1. And then exponential of minus t over tau. So there's our expression that just simplifies down to 5 times t times the exponential of minus t over tau. Okay, there's our solution to that second order differential equation. And we just had to find the right one in this table that would work for our application. Okay, so let's go on to, let's see, let's go on to problem number three now. This one is a linear, I'm going to go ahead and close these Laplace tables right here. Give ourselves just a little bit more room to work this one out. Okay, so this is a kind of a culmination of what we've done. We have a differential equation, but instead of just one variable, we have two. And this u value comes from this plot right there, the one that we generated earlier. And if you recall, this one equals, uh, let's see, that's going to be 3 divided by s, e to the minus s, minus 3 over s, e to the minus 5s. Okay, there's our function u. And we're just going to be plugging that in right there when the time comes. Okay, we're going to convert this over to Laplace form. And in Laplace form, with zero initial conditions, 
we're going to have this expression, k is just constant, uh, u is going to be a variable, so I just convert that over to u of s, and I have minus y of s. If I bring this over to that side, I have tau s plus 1 times y of s equals k times u of s. And if I just divide through by tau s plus 1 and tau s plus 1, then I get my expression for y of s. Okay, and then times u of s. Then I'm going to be substituting in u of s right there. So now I have a y of s. Okay, is going to be k times uh, divided by tau s plus 1 times 3 over s e to the minus s plus k divided by tau s plus 1. And that's going to be minus 3 over s e to the minus 5s. Okay, so let's convert both of these back over. Let's find something uh, in your Laplace table that's going to be of that form. Okay, let me go back there. I guess we needed it. Um, let me go back to Laplace table. Okay, so Laplace transforms there on the right. And here's our table. Let's find one that we can use for this application. And let's see. Uh, it looks like we found one right here. Okay, so that's uh, it's 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. Now I'll close that. So now we have y of t equals, and then I'll just have the k out front and the 3 out front as well. And then I'll have 1 minus e to the minus t divided by tau. Now to apply the time delay, what we do is we just take any instance of time and we replace that with time minus the time delay. So it's going to be t minus 1. And then I multiply it by the step function with it starts from 0 to 1 at time equals 1. I'm going to do that for the second one as well. It's going to be minus 3k. But now instead of a time delay of 1, I'm going to have a time delay of 5. OK, and then we have st minus 5. OK, there's our function right there. Now what I'm going to do is come back to, let's see, I'm going to come back to the web page one more time. Okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and just uh, plot this with Python. Come to Assignments, and this one is Laplace Transform Applications. And here we have the figure source code for 1A. I'm just going to start with that because it already has the, um, okay, already has this. I'll select, uh, sometimes it doesn't work in Edge, so i got to get the code with a different browser like Chrome. Okay, figure source code, get code, gives it to you in text form. And I really just want just this top part, okay, just that figure one. So let's just start with that. And I'll close this one out. Okay, and I'll create a new, um, okay, so this is going to be problem 3c change extension to dot py okay so just this is just a python code that I'll add in and the very first thing that I'll do well actually let me do this I'm going to do this in notepad just so it's a little bit easier to see and then what we'll do is uh, have import uh, numpy as np Okay, and then what we're going to need is a couple uh, time points. Well, let's go do our k first of all. k equals 1 and tau equals 2. And then I'm going to have some time points. And I'll use numpy, the lin linearly spaced values between 0 and 8. And I'll have 81 time points. 
Then the other thing I need is a step function. I'll just have that be zeros for n time points. And I'll do a second step function. These are when those functions are gonna turn on. And uh, then S1, I'm gonna do this from 11 onward. That's gonna be equal to where uh, time equals one. And then for step two, that's gonna be from five seconds on. So you got about 10 points per second there. So 51 on, that's gonna be uh, step two. Okay, let's get our y function now. That's gonna be three times k uh, times one minus, I'm gonna use numpy uh, for the exponential, and that's gonna be uh, t minus one divided by tau. Okay, and then I'll continue on to the next line, just so I don't run out of space there. Um, and let's just go ahead and add the next one. I'll do minus t minus five divided by tau. Okay, and now let's just add that to our plot. I'll do plt plot and t comma y. Let's make that a red dashed line. And let's give it a legend as well. I could either label those or just give it a legend. And let's do the first one is gonna be u of t. And the second one is gonna be y of t. Okay, I'll have my grid and then save it. Okay, let's try this one. Um, I'm just going to open it up with IDLE, but you can edit with, or use others like Spider or um, you know Jupyter Notebook. Let's just see if it works. And you know what? I forgot to do a show at the very end. You don't need to do that in other ones, but in IDLE you do. Okay, show there at the very end. Run that again, and it looks like I have a problem here. Okay. Let's see what my problem is. Um, hmm. Okay, I started with zeros on those. Let's just see if I can debug this. Uh, one minus, okay, I need to Okay, I'm running into an error somewhere. I gotta go back to my expression and just see where I'm having this problem. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna pause this really quick and figure out where I'm going wrong. Okay, I think I figured it out. I just forgot to put in the step functions there. Um, S1 and S2. So that just means they're gonna be zero before that point, but then one after that point. Let's see if I can run it again and See if I get the correct response. Okay, so I needed those step functions in there. It didn't give me the right answer. Um, there you can see it went to, you know, a value of, it's gonna trend up exponential to k to a value of three. And then at a, starting at time point five, I have the input be equal to zero again. And so it starts trending down toward zero. Um, if I change, for example, the time constant on that, let's say time constant equals, um, Let's say we make it uh, quicker, uh, like 0.5, and then it's gonna get up there faster and then trend back down uh, quicker as well. Okay, so that's just a first order system. The time constant says how to get, how much to get 63% of the way there in one time constant. So if I do a 0.5 instead of a two, it gets there faster. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, what we did is we, reviewed, um, so just to review what we covered here, we started off with uh, the very first one is just constructing these Laplace variables, uh, these Laplace expressions from a graphical function. And then we practiced a couple things, you know, looking up in Laplace tables is individual elements. And we solved some differential equations using Laplace transforms, rearranging it algebraically and then solving it back into time domain. And then this final problem where we kind of combined parts one and two and then some of these, uh, this third part, 
just for a linear first order system with an impulse input.